Hi everybody, this is Ron, aka Gadget Man, here with a lesson on how to use your handheld vacuum pump. Now, the first thing you're going to find yourself in need of is some of these, which are quite simply vacuum caps. You can get them from AutoZone for about three or four dollars, and they come in a package that looks like this. Okay, and uh, they have an assortment of sizes, and you will be using them. I promise you that. Now, while we're looking, and this is the the second thing. Sorry, uh, the second thing is you're going to need one of these. Now, what this is, is a tool that uh, is used primarily to bleed your braking system, and it's a handheld vacuum pump. It comes with an assortment of stuff, like it comes with little canisters to hold your, uh, your vacuums and lids with various attachments, so that when you put a vacuum on your braking system, it pulls the fluid into containers like this. And uh, it'll also come with bags that have your hoses. You might be able to see a hose in there. And uh, various attachments, which I've put in, inside one of these to make it easier to use. Now, uh, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have the right tools in hand to do this, which doesn't really matter. It doesn't, you don't need that much. All you really need is maybe a pair of pliers, not usually even that, because all you're doing is pulling the vacuum lines off and inserting the piece on the end. But here is the bag with all the different attachments. I don't really use any of these because this one, which is a Mighty Vac, comes with a very neat little end that you uh, put onto the hose that is cone-shaped and will fit almost every hose there is. Uh, so, you now that being said, what you do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down in such a way where you can see what I'm doing. This is the vacuum gauge, and you, pump, you squeeze the handles. All you got to do now, the hose is open, so I'm going to check it, make sure that the lines here and everything's working fine. So I'm just going to put my finger over the end, and I squeeze it, and you can see this hole. It, this definitely holding a vacuum, at least except for my my finger. You see, so it's definitely holding a vacuum. It's not leaking out. So the the gauge and the hose works fine. Let it off. It's gone. All right. So now, the first area that I always look for an error is right here on the brake booster. Always, always check that. So, now I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now, usually they'll get small leaks and uh, then they'll stop They'll stop registering their uh, the vacuum. They'll, they'll start leaking a little bit in over time. Now, let me see if you can actually see in there where I'm at. Let's see here. Yeah, it looks like you can. So, I'm going to plug this in here. You can see, going all the way in. Fairly good fit. I'm going to squeeze this handle, and we'll see what happens. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, let's see. Let me see if I can't put a different end on that and get that upright. So, we're going to swap that small cone for a larger cone. And so we can get a nice tight fit on that. I can pull it out of here. It always helps to have this stuff laid out when I'm trying to do these films. I apologize for that, guys. Uh, is that it? No, it's not it. There we go. Alright, so now I've got a larger end here. And I'm just going to push it down into the end of this. So it's a nice tight fit. It should be slightly larger than your hose. Then I take it like clear hose and I attach it on the end like that. Now, we're ready to pump it down. We're going to see what happens. Uh-oh. Looks like it'll only hold a couple of inches of vacuum before it gives up the ghost. So, that vacuum diaphragm is bad. Not much we can do about that, is there? So, might be here, but that's it. It is not pulling a vacuum. Most we're getting is five inches, and that should have already been way up higher than that. Yep. So, it's definitely not pulling a vacuum. So, you can see that that vacuum the, the the power booster is bad. So wiggle it. It's not in the connection. So it's got to be inside the diaphragm. It'll pull a little bit of vacuum, but once you the normal engine vacuum is around 17 inches. Well, with the Gadget Man Groove, it's going to it'll run all the way up to 22, 24, maybe even 25 inches of vacuum as a peak. So if it won't hold five inches of vacuum over five inches, it's going to start leaking. So Number one, the brake booster is bad. I can't disconnect that one, so I'm not going to. Now I switch back over to my original narrow end. 
And now we're going to go back in here. Now I've already tested these lines, so I've already got it set up so we can tell. Now here we have, right, let me turn around here so you can see what I'm dealing with here. Now you see this line right here? Now I'm going to hook it up. Just plug this down inside there is all you got to do. I'm doing this one hand. I wish I had an assistant, which I will have come Monday, guys. And she's pretty. Oh. Alright, so here we go. Now let's take a look at the vacuum gauge. Alright. You can see that that line is also a solid vacuum leak. Now that means that that's not working. Or that will not work with the gadget man groove. So where this line went, which was right back here, I plugged that off. I just put a cap on it and left it. There's also one back here that you can't see that I hooked back up. Uh, no, I didn't hook that one back up. I'm sorry. That uh, is leaking. So we'll, we'll test on this one right here so you can see it. And I've already tested the other one. So we'll know that that's, that's a good one, although it does... That one there, you'll, you'll be surprised at how well that one works. So now we're checking the other one. Get it up in the shade where you can actually see the gauge. I'm going to pump it down. And you can see, that's what a vacuum leak looks like, guys. It tries, but the diaphragm is completely busted on that. So it just simply will not work. Okay? Now, one more, and then I'm going to turn you guys loose so that you can see what a good vacuum line looks like. And that's this line right here. This one here, I think, I believe this one goes to the transmission, but I can't swear to that. So we're just going to plug it in here. And you can see that I'm actually, I am connecting it right. There's nothing, no funny business here. You'll find the same thing when you start getting into your cars. Well, I thought it was going to be connected good. Okay, try it again here. There we go. See? Uh -oh. I do. I was, oh, I was leaning on the part that bleeds off the pressure. Okay, so you can see here that it's holding very well at about 19, 20 inches of vacuum. I'm going to pump it down even further. And that diaphragm actually is holding very, very, very well. See, it's, it's not even trickling out. That's what you want to see on all your vacuum lines. You want to be able to pull them down to 22 inches of vacuum at the very least. Now, see this one here. I think I can even pump it up a little higher. Let's see, now that's holding 25 inches of vacuum, 24 and a half. 24 and a half inches of vacuum, it looks like it's holding them. So, that is what you're looking for when you do your vacuum tests. Now, needless to say, guys, there's a lot more vacuum lines on here, and there's the individual systems, and this tool is very vital to use uh, to test everything with. It's, it's wonderfully handy, it's small, it's compact. You can almost stick it in your pocket, all right? But when you get down to it and you want to start testing the individual components, you can also plug that tool onto the component itself and see whether the vacuum line is what's leaking or the diaphragm inside the component. You can do it to test your map sensors also. All the diaphragms inside your, in, inside your, uh, your passenger compartment, where the, which controls your shutters and, and all your defrosters and all that stuff on the vehicles is equipped that way. Also, your EVAP canister. Big problem with that. A lot of times they'll develop cracks on the bottom. But other than that, you know, you guys are going to have to get out there and check it yourself. And anyway, this is how you do it. And any, any handyman can afford 50 bucks for one of these tools. And at Amazon, they'll ship it to you, including the freight. Uh, so uh, anyway, I want to say that's another lesson for you. This one here was only getting 10 or 15% mileage gains. I've now capped off three major vacuum leaks. One of them I can't because it's the brake booster. And uh, I guarantee you this man will be at 50% mileage when we get done with this. So that's what a little vacuum leak can do. Guys, I'm going to say God bless you all richly and warmly. Remember that don't give up on this. The gadget man groove works, and it works every time. The only qualification is you got to get the electronics. Well, you know, the newer vehicles, the computers, they really want to steal from you. But uh, you'll still get gains on those. And with the older vehicles like this one right here, before 2002, 2004, you're going to get huge gains. So if you're not... Check the vacuum system, and on that note, I'll say hasta la vista, baby. Remember to smile for a stranger today. You will both be glad you did.